Hey, what's up? Wes here. Thanks a lot for tuning in to yet another Resident Evil video. Now, a couple of months ago, I started a new series called I Haven't Played This Game in Years, where I revisit a game that I haven't played in a long time to see if I share the same opinion of it today as I did way back a long time ago. And the first two games that I chose for this series were Resident Evils 2 and 3. Now, my opinion of Resident Evil 2 was pretty lukewarm, as it was many years ago, and apparently that's because I played the game wrong. So my know-it-all buddy Lucius T definitely had to let me know that I was playing the game wrong, and, well, here's his reaction, just see for yourself. What's up guys, Lucius T here, and I'm sure you're wondering why am I wearing this incredibly stylish Akura sweater? Well, it's because I'm trying to respond to my boy Winnie the Pooh, otherwise known as Westapo, who made an excellent video about Resident Evil. However, he is once more mistaken. Now he goes on and on about Resident Evil 3 being great because of the nemesis. Well, unbeknownst to him, he played the game wrong. Again, he played the A-side on Leon and the A-side on Claire. How do I know it? Because when you showed the deaf animations of the side characters, they were the same. But when you play the B story, you get a different animation and it's wild. It's crazy. It's kids. Great show, but not what we're talking about. Now, back to what I'm talking about. If he likes the nemesis, he should play the B side. Because literally, that's where they stole the idea. He comes at you through walls and scares the crap out of you. I was so scared that I couldn't even beat the game for months. I never even beat it as clear on the B side. That's how intense and scary it is. And he don't got no BS rocket launcher. And he can't run like 28 days later. This is real terror. And it means your choices on the A side matter. Knowing you, you think this song is about you. You probably took the machine gun and the sidearm. Leaving your B side guy nothing. And the actual enemy final boss is on the B side. And don't even get me started about hunk and tofu. Ain't no one got time for that. So West, stop oh. You need to strap on your man nuts and play some Resident Evil 2 B-side. Woo! Fine, Lucius. Fine. I went ahead and played the game the correct way. So what I did is I basically just got footage of the B-mode and summarized the game similar to what I did with the first Resident Evil for its 20th anniversary uh, for a video that I did last year. I kind of did something similar. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what the B mode is all about. Now we are heading into spoiler territory, so you have been warned. Let's check it out. So immediately, right off the bat, the intro to start the game preceding the opening FMV is different than in A mode. Leon and Claire run into each other the same as before, but remember when they get separated by an explosion? B mode starts Resident Evil 2 on the opposite side of the flames versus A mode. This requires you to take an alternate path to the police station. For this video, I chose Leon, playing in a range mode, since you have the ability to use an unlimited machine gun. Oh, for crying out. Fan! It's fan! I also included Claire B mode on normal difficulty, you freaking stickler. Anyway, going through the back entrance of the police station, you make it to the roof. Remember the burning wreckage of a helicopter that found itself halfway inside of the police station poking through the wall like a wisdom tooth? Well, here's the origin to that story. Brought down by friendly fire, the helicopter crashes into the roof leaving burning rubble in its wake. As we already know from A mode, the valve handle is required to extinguish this fire, but in B mode, items are sometimes waiting in different locations. After retrieving the valve handle from the main office of the police department and putting the fire out, we're met with yet another early cutscene.
The wreckage through the roof causes debris to block off your path to the rooftop, which leaves you with only one way to go. Oh, good lord. Who the hell is this guy? Mr. X? The bad guy from Kung Fu? Another tyrant monster from Umbrella, Mr. X shares similarities with a certain nemesis showing up at random times, seemingly immortal. First impressions can be deceiving, but not in this case. The best thing to do is to run like hell until you're better suited for battle. You can take him out with some heavy duty firepower, but that doesn't mean he's dead. Oh no. Navigating through the hallways and rooms of the RPD headquarters, Leon and Claire find even more zombies and monsters lying in wait as opposed to A mode. They eventually run into each other after Leon encounters Sherry, the daughter of Dr. William Birkin, the creator of the G-Virus. Before long, Leon runs into Ada while Claire bumps into Sherry. Leon and Ada push a paddy wagon aside to reveal an entrance to the jail. Leon informs Claire over walkie-talkie that the path is clear. Do you read me, Claire? We now have access to the back of the parking lot. Ada then goes off on her own for a bit, just like in A-Mode, but this time retrieves a medallion that Sherry has dropped. Ada returns to toss Leon a key and bails on him before he can get any more info from her. Ada, wait! Claire blows up the helicopter wreckage in the hallway with some handy C4, then contacts Leon to let him know it's been cleared. And I've cleared the wreckage that was blocking the corridor. And remember in A-Mode where you come across the locker containing both the machine gun and side pack? Depending on which one you took, the other will be waiting for your partner in B mode. Unless you're a total dick, that is, and took both, leaving your partner nada. Too bad. So sad. Returning to the police station, our protagonists get a bit of a jump scare as Mr. X goes Kool-Aid Man on us and busts through the wall. Oh yeah! <laughs> You'd think taking him out would render him weak for a while, but you'd be wrong. Jeez, hasn't this guy ever heard of a door? Mr. X busts through throwing haymakers at pretty much the same sections of B mode for both Leon and Claire, but does occasionally show up at different parts as well. Now remember when Lucius mentioned that the death scenes for Ben the Reporter and Chief Irons were pretty much the same? The death animations of the side characters, they were the same. Yeah, how could you forget? They're different here, without parasites bursting from their bellies a la Alien. Take a look at each. No! Get! Get away! No! What a way to go. Ada drops by just in time to witness the aftermath before ignoring Leon and running off again. Ada, wait. Hey! Claire then comes in on the radio, telling Leon to follow her through the sewers and then cuts off. Claire! Claire! Wait, wait! Man, Leon really has a way with the ladies, doesn't he? Ada, wait! Ada, wait! Ada, wait! Claire! Wait, wait! Man, why doesn't anyone ever listen to me? I feel your pain, brother. Afterwards, we encounter our first boss. Remember the boss in A-Mode? Some disgusting monstrosity that vomited mutant insects? Well, this time it's the first metamorphosis of William Birkin, who swings a pipe around, bludgeoning anyone in his path. After fighting the good doctor off, Leon runs back into Ada, while Claire retrieves Sherry. Just step around the torso, dear. For an excursion through the sewers. Leon and Ada cross paths with Dr. Birkin's wife, Annette, who pops a cap into Leon's rookie ass. Ada takes off after Annette and learns that Ada's own husband, whom she was searching for, is dead. 
Annette notices her daughter's medallion around Ada's neck, naturally assuming malignant intent, and a struggle ensues. Please, you're seriously gonna mess with Ada Wong? On Claire's end, the mutated Dr. Birkin walks by above, unbeknownst that his daughter and Claire are directly below him. This happens during A mode, while in B mode, it's Mr. X who strolls by. Pick your poison. Either way, Sherry and Claire once again become separated in the sewers. In Leon's B mode, he awakens from the initial shock of being shot, while in Claire's B game, she happens across Leon and You've been shot. I'll be okay. It's Ada I'm worried about. Traversing the sewers from that point on is pretty much the same. Remember the giant gator boss from A mode? Blowing off his head will ensure that he won't be around for B. Leon and Ada reunite, with Ada attending to Leon's bullet wound. Leon and Ada climb into a tram, while Claire runs back into Sherry at the same tram. The tram ride for the two girls is completely uneventful, while Leon and Ada's trip is a bit more exciting, with Birkin stuffing his arm into the tram the way a raccoon would sift blindly through a garbage can. Off of the tram and on the way to an elevator car which leads to Umbrella's secret laboratory, Mode A is all set to go, with the elevator car waiting for passengers. In B mode, Leon and Claire must first retrieve a control panel key located below the elevator station to call up the elevator car. And what's on the security monitor? Hey, you're on candid camera. At this point, you have the firepower to take down Mr. X and grab ammo off of him while he's down. You could also do something similar with the Nemesis on Resident Evil 3, but the Nemesis takes way more damage. And here's where I figure I ought to compare the two beasts. While Lucius says that the Nemesis is pretty much a ripoff of Mr. X, and in a way, he's kind of right, Woo! the Nemesis is much more frightening in my opinion. First off, the Nemesis is just a hideous behemoth of a monster, put together like some sort of Frankenstein, while Mr. X looks like an enormous Patrick Stewart sporting a flasher's trench coat. Mr. X is also slow and easy to evade, while Nemesis is the Usain Bolt of tyrants. And then there's the screams. Not screams of terror as you piss yourself running from the Nemesis, but the haunting bellows from the beast himself. And the way he whispers Stars. is chilling. Mr. X, on the other hand, is mute, and battle cries aren't part of his repertoire. The Nemesis will show up at random times, whereas Mr. X always shows up at the same spots. Gotta give Nemesis the edge here. Once the control panel is activated with the key, the elevator car rises into place for a trip down into the bowels of the devil. Naturally, once the car begins its descent, a tyrant jumps on top, inviting violent confrontation. In Leon and Claire's A mode, the tyrant in question is once again William Birkin, transforming into an even more grotesque creature, while in B mode, the boss is still Birkin, but in a much more advanced state of metamorphosis. Disposing of the boss concludes with the elevator car overheating, and thus rendering it stationary, leaving Leon and Claire to retreat for the ventilation ducts to penetrate the lab. Leon and Claire then find themselves in unfamiliar territory, a power room which is inaccessible in A mode. Once power is restored, it's back to the lab just like in the A game. Traversing the lab has a few small differences, the main being the task of retrieving the power room key. Annette corners Leon on the way to the power room and drops the bombshell that Ada is a spy. That can't be. I know her. Ada wouldn't do something like that. Poor gullible Leon. No wonder he has bad luck with women. It isn't long before Mr. X drops in and breaks up the party. For Claire, Annette finds Sherry being chased by Mr. X through the power room on a security monitor and reveals to Claire that Sherry has the G-Virus sample hidden within her medallion, the object of Mr. X's conquest. Claire rushes to the power room where she saves Sherry and tricks Mr. X into falling into a vat of molten steel below. When Leon returns to the power room, he's cornered by Mr. X before Ada swoops in and saves him by distracting Mr. X, but not before she's mortally wounded. 
In both instances, Mr. X finds himself falling into the molten steel. Leon administers one last cheeseball kiss to Ada as she slips away. With the evacuation notice blaring from the intercom system throughout the lab, Claire radios Leon to retrieve a wounded Sherry from the lab's security office as per her instructions on A mode. Leon carries Sherry to safety and boards the emergency escape train. While encountering Mr. X, Sherry slips away and Claire rushes back to the lab to look for her. Claire finds Sherry weeping over her dying mother. Like Leon, Claire, accompanied by Sherry, embark on the emergency train before realizing the gates to liberation must be opened first. While Leon and Claire restore power to open the gate, a mutated Mr. X climbs out of the molten steel for one final battle. A mystery woman <coughs> Ada, assists in the final confrontation by tossing down a rocket launcher to dispose of Mr. X just like in the end of the first Resident Evil. Game over. With Mr. X destroyed and Sherry safe, Claire and Leon board the train together to ride off safely into the sunset. But wait, there's more. Who could forget Dr. Birkin? William Birkin's final transformation resembles an amorphous blob. All teeth, tentacles, and giant butthole. Seriously, doesn't this monster look like it has a giant butthole lined with fangs? It clearly states exit only. Blast that bastard to kingdom come, and Resident Evil 2 truly comes to its conclusion. What a hell of a ride. Oh, brother Lucius, you've opened my eyes. I've seen the light. Seriously, man, thanks a lot for introducing me to a whole new world that I wasn't even aware of. Seriously, I gotta plead ignorance on this one. I had no idea that there were so many extras and so much replay value to Resident Evil 2. I mean, back in 98, games that had replay value such as this, it was just unheard of. I mean, to me, it's comparable to the second quest of Zelda. Now that's not even the half of it. There's a ton of extras and Easter eggs hidden throughout Resident Evil 2 as well. Such as Brad Vickers, the zombie. Now Brad Vickers is that pussy ass pilot that took off on you uh, at the beginning of Resident Evil 1. He's actually dead and turned into a zombie at the beginning of the game. Now, if you start a game on A mode and get from the beginning all the way to the police station without picking up any items, the zombie Brad Vickers will be down in the tunnel below the uh, Raccoon City Police Department. Now, apparently, the nemesis killed him in Resident Evil 3 because that supposedly takes place right before Resident Evil 2, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense because in Resident Evil 3, when you go into the office where the cop had locked himself in on Resident Evil 2, he's already dead, where in Resident Evil 2, he's still alive, so the timeline doesn't really jive there, but I'm not going to get into that. But if you kill Brad Vickers, he actually gives you a key that you can unlock um, a special closet where there's special costumes that you can wear. And there's even extra modes to play. You can unlock a character called Hunk, who's actually a Soldier 4 umbrella. And basically what you have to do is you have to make it from the sewer all the way to the rooftop where the helicopter is. It's tough as hell. I mean, you only have a limited supply of ammo, and there are monsters everywhere. It is really tough. Now, the way that I unlocked Hunk mode was I actually played through mode A and then continued on to mode B and got an A ranking on both and the way that I got the A ranking is I had to beat the game under two and a half hours I only used one ink ribbon and I didn't use any first aid sprays at all uh, herbs were okay but I didn't use any first aid sprays and I was able to get an A ranking on both uh, the A mode and the B mode which unlocked punk now if you beat the game 
four more times continuously on the same save file, then you unlock Tofu. Yeah, it's just as weird as it sounds. Tofu is a man-sized block of tofu, and basically you have to do the exact same mission as Hunk, except you have no weapons except a knife, but the good thing is that Tofu can take a lot more damage, but it's still, it's, it's really freaking hard. But the funny thing about Tofu is it's hilarious. Just listen to the funny sounds that he makes as he runs. And then check it out when he dies. I mean, this is just funny as hell. Now, in the DualShock version of Resident Evil 2, there's yet another extra. There's the Extreme Battle Mode. And this is really tough, too. You actually start out in the laboratory and have to make it all the way back to the police station. And then once you're in the police station, you have to locate four bombs. Now, the police station is loaded with all kinds of enemies. It has some ammo you can pick up. They give you some ink ribbon, so it's not impossible, but it's still really tough. You even have several Mr. X's running around. So you definitely have your work cut out for you. But you can actually unlock some other selectable characters such as Ada Wong and Chris Redfield, which I haven't done yet. But I mean, all the extras, all the replay value in this game is just amazing. Which now makes it my favorite Resident Evil game on the PlayStation. I mean, I played through this game probably 15 times. I mean, I got hooked. I was addicted. So before Resident Evil 3, Nemesis was my favorite game, followed by Resident Evil 1, and then Resident Evil 2 was last. Well, this has completely changed everything. Resident Evil 2 is now my favorite. I still like Resident Evil 3 a lot, but it just can't top all of the replay value that's locked within Resident Evil 2. It's a pretty awesome experience. And now with rumors that there's going to be a Resident Evil 2 remake, I mean... Sign me up. You cannot get me the remake any quicker. I'm all about it. I can't wait. So you definitely have to play both the A and B mode on Resident Evil 2 to get your money's worth. It is excellent. It's fun. Thanks a lot, Lucius, for opening my eyes. And for all of you viewers who have yet to check out Lucius T's channel, I highly recommend it. If you thought this bastard was goofy in my video, just wait till you see his stuff. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description below. Do yourself a favor, check him out. Thanks a lot for sticking with me through this long ass episode. I really appreciate it. Until next time, I'm going to catch you guys later.